I just tell people, look, listen, this isn't, they get the word detox and juice cleanse. They make it like one big word. And I'm like, it's not a juice cleanse is great. Do it for the micronutrients, do it for, you know, the fact that you want to just, you know, in a sense, take on like some fasting because your body's not having to work to digest food, but that is not a detox. You are not detoxing anything. Let's ditch the quick fix and dive into today's conversation. Welcome everybody. My guest today is Joel Evans. Joel clearly has a mission. A few members of his family became ill and he watched their suffering helplessly. Joel learned everything he could about health to help them. In 2014, his first child was born. His son suffered from some health issues such as heavy metal toxicity, gut issues, and pan pandas. This forced Joel to go down the rabbit hole and learn even more. Luckily, his son is doing much better and they've wiped out all those issues of the human suffering he was going through in the past. But these are the experiences that, you know, have got Joel going down the learning path and and what keeps him up at night. So Joel is committed to ending the human suffering and health disorders to the capacity that he can. And uh, Joel is actually further uh, invested in his uh, education to become a cell core practitioner, a new fit practitioner as well. And he's also the host of the podcast, The Hacked Life. Uh, Very excited to have you here today, Joel. Welcome. Man, what a pleasure. Uh, I'm excited and uh, yeah, gracious to be here, man. We're going to, we're going to get into some good stuff. I already know. Yeah, this is, this is good. I, you know, definitely wanted to uh, just kind of hit off with uh, how did you become a health, uh, holistic health coach? What's kind of yeah, behind I, that? I, I mean, you know, it's I'm, I'm as I'm listening to your amazing intro about me, uh, I'm like, oh, this is great. Um, you know, I was thinking, I'm like, yeah, all these things, like my son's illnesses or you know imbalances in his body, and and having that ha- happen to him made anybody that has a kid or a child, man, they just know like you will do anything for them to not see them suffer and. I mean, as I'm listening to you give this intro, I'm thinking, yeah, like that drove me. It sounds cheesy. Oh, Joel's, you know, he's dedicated to end human suffering. No, it seriously, I take it. It, I I have so many clients that reach out to me, you know, the same thing and, and family members and people. And it's like, when you can't help somebody because they can't afford it, or how about this? I have people that are ill around me and they just won't even take my advice. They won't. I'm like, I will coach you for free. Just buy the (laughs) supplements. Let's just go through the protocol. They're like, no. Like, why? And so like that eats me up. Like that makes me want to help these people. And so same thing with my son, though, you know, watching him have, you know, things that are not quote unquote normal happen to him. Um, I remember, like you mentioned, like having ticks and having like these, like all of a sudden he just starts blinking and out of nowhere. And he's like doing this nervous tick. And I'm like, hey, man, like, uh, are you just doing this? Like, out of, you know, because you want to. And he's like, he kind of was embarrassed. I remember he's like, no, dad, like it's, yeah, like it's normal. He kind of played it off. I know, and you know, something's wrong. So there's some imbalance. I don't like to judge or anything, but something is off. Right. And so let's figure it out. And so, God, I mean, actually how blessed am I to be, you know, associated with people like yourself that, that, and that understand these root cause illnesses and have figured it out and paved the path. And I can have that knowledge. I'm able to access that and then test it and try routines and do can, you know, gut test and and try to figure out what's going on and get to these root cause issues. And guess what? I always say this, but when the body is balanced, the body knows how to heal itself. And so let's just get to the root cause issues, give the body the right input and the body's going to heal. And, um, you know, luckily that's, that's been the case and that happened for him and he's gotten better, but we still come up with challenges and these new challenges force me to get better. So. So that's a little bit of the history there. And, and you've had just your own health, uh, emphasis, right? I mean, you've always kind of had a healthy, lifestyle kind of focus historically? Yeah, uh, yeah I'm not really. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I just turned 40. So when I was 18 years old, I really think like that was a time where I started embarking on uh, my quest for health. But, but growing up, I was allergic to, you know, allergies. I mean, I had sulfa drug allergies. Uh, I remember I was in the hospital a lot, not like anything crazy, but I had, you know, ear infections and all the time, like regularly I had ear infections and I was in the hospital a lot and um, just on medications and, and things like of that nature. And I grew up with a healthy diet of peanut butter sandwiches on white bread with a Capri Sun and some kind of dessert, like a Twinkie or a Ho-Ho or a Ding Dong or a Nutter Butter. That was my lunch 
man from the eternity, like since I was at least in first grade, all the way up until high school. And when I got into high school, I think, you know, you feel like this pressure, you kind of see like, where do I stand? Where do I fit in in life? You're asking like this identity question. And I remember just wanting to be better. I wanted girls to notice me. I wanted to be, how do I do that? And so I'm like, let me, let me be more muscular. Let me learn how to transform my body. And that led me down to bodybuilding, which again, I always say bodybuilding isn't the end. Of, there's a lot of things they do wrong, but it got me in this conversation of health and protein and how much you eat and macronutrients and all this stuff. And then that, and then that led me to a healthy, really just loving exercise and loving that transformation of my body, which then led me to wanting to go deeper, watching my, my mom suffer from breast cancer and feeling helpless and not understanding, like, how do I help someone like this? Here I am listening to all these podcasts, learning all these things. I feel like I know a lot, but none of it matters because I can't help the people closest to me. I don't know how to get them better. And I feel helpless. I feel vulnerable. And so that led me to seek out other naturopaths and go down holistic health coaching certifications. And so here I am and I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I, I still like every day. I'm like, man, I don't know anything. I don't know what I don't know. And so that's the exciting part, I think. Right. Do you have occasional brain fog or forgetfulness? Studies have shown that our brain has the best health at the age of 22 and deteriorates each year after that. ISO Alpha is a natural brain health supplement with over 40 scientific studies to verify it stimulates the vagus nerve and improves brain function. It uses bioavailable hops bitter concentrate to allow the nervous system to get into a flow state to release chemicals that help with hand-eye coordination, memory, and quick thinking. ISO Alpha guarantees results in 90 days or your money back. You can get this brain health formula at isoalpha.com. That is I-S-O-A-L-P-H-A dot com. Go to isoalpha.com now to get your proven brain health formula. You know, it's very exciting. Just a couple of quick things. You know, I had that same kind of experience when I was younger. I had a, a, an aunt who was quadriplegic from polio. And, you know, I just always wanted to figure out how could I help her a little bit, even, even as a kid, you know, just, you know, hey, how do I open a door for her or help her eat her food or, you know, those kind of things. There was, I didn't know, you know, I had a couple of uncles that were also in the chiropractic world. Um, and it was fascinating to me. And, and, but the core there was just this, Hey, how can I help people? And then you learn all these things, like you're saying, and, and you come to people with this knowledge and you go, man, I know I can help you. And like you said, some want the knowledge, but they're not really ready to invest what it takes. Right. And that's the hard part about being a doctor, a coach, you know, is you've got this great information that, you know, will help. And a lot of it's very simple in, in its basic concept. Uh, try to eat natural, try to be active, try to get water, try to get rest. There's nothing real complicated about it. So it's not quite as exciting as some of the other things, right? Do you find that as part of the, well, it can't be that simple, right? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I'm on, I, I, you know, it's funny. Uh, I, again, I don't know what I don't know. And like the more I'm learning, I, I was kind of brought up through like the naturopathic uh, model that I kind of like learned and it works by the way, it gets results. And so that I'm all about results, whatever, if it works and gets results, I'm happy about that. So, but I was, I was brought up in, in the sense, or my education was, Hey, like if you have candida yeast overgrowth, let's just say, for example, you want to go in there and you want to, I want to kill it with herbals and bring that yeast back down. The more I'm learning though, I'm like, wait a second, H. pylori, candida, these things are in our body, E. coli, they're in our body naturally. It's when they pleomorph and get out of balance. That's when it becomes a problem. So am I really killing this thing? Do I want to kill it? Or do I want to just bring the body back into homeostasis? And so the more I'm learning, I'm thinking, wait a second, I don't think I need maybe all these killers or assassins like the herbals and things to kill everything. What if I just use certain formulas like fulvic and humic acids and things to bring the body back into a natural terrain that'll heal it? And I've been talking to some other practitioners and, and they're like, yeah, that's what you need to do. You'll get the same results that you do but it's just a different way of looking at it. And so that this is like kind of the new things that for me that I'm embarking on and like, how do I get my clients better with maybe just like three basic supplements? And if they do this and just, they are eventually going to start to heal. Because again, we talk about it when the body gets the right input, the body's going to heal naturally. And so I think you're right. There's just so many things that are just so much more simpler than we make it. Yeah. And if, and if we could, if we could get to that point of doing even the simple things, well, because the human body is just, 
incredibly complex that we'll never really fully understand in my under, in my opinion and i and i'm and i'm continuing to learn i'm continuing to study so it's not because i don't want to keep learning but uh, but if we could at least get people started on that and so one of the focuses that you've had as a health coach has been the you know weight loss uh, but within that you've really i think developed a good uh, way of trying to help people focus on health and then weight loss basically will come yes is, is that fair 100 percent. you're you're 100 you nailed it so uh, share a little bit about your philosophy and how, how you go down the weight loss road. Dr. Ernst, I mean, I think you said it perfectly. A healthy body cannot be overweight. It's When you're healthy, you just start to lose weight. When your metabolism is working, you start to lose weight. I always tell people that I don't get you to lose. The goal is weight loss. I got to move the scale. I got to, there's a number. Well, that's why you haven't been successful in the past because you're so focused on this number and you hit the number and then you just gain all the weight back. It has to be a sustainable lifestyle. When I get your body healthy, the byproduct is weight loss. I'm teaching people health. I'm teaching people the root causes of like, how do we get there? How do we build the sustainable habits so that you can continue to rinse and repeat this over and over again? And when you understand that, I think it's even more powerful because I am essentially creating a health coach in every home. That person then delivers that to their kids who then deliver it to their kids their whole household embodies health. And how great is that? that? That gift keeps on going. If we can do that, man, I think how much healthier the world's gonna be. Because you start to empower these people, right? It's not just some quick diet fix. Like anybody can do that, right? Exactly. And those work. And I love the trainers that do that because we're all trying to just make, we, we are all using different methods, just trying to get people healthier. I think that's the main, we, we all have the right um, you know, goal and in, in, in mindset and heart set. So. Um, it's just, I just look at it a little bit differently than counting macros and doing, you know, every, uh, meals every two hours. I just, I just don't believe in that philosophy. I think that's great if you're a competitor of some nature or you're a professional athlete, but, you know, or, you know, a bodybuilder or something like that. But for the average person, the busy professional I work with, they've got kids, they got a mortgage, they don't have time to be counting calories. <laughs> so, you know, and counting right. macros down to the exact, right. uh, you know, ratio. So I think those are good tactics and strategies. Do it for a week, maybe, but long term, I just don't see it being sustainable. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's, it's hard because uh, there's, there's elements within every approach that have positives, whether it's paleo, keto you know, this type uh, weight loss program, this type weight loss program, they have elements, but it, you know, that, that full balance is not, not there. Um, so what are, what are kind of the base strategies that you kind of try to coach for yeah. just good health? I mean, yeah. I know it all starts with the gut. I think we had that little conversation before we started recording. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, what are your strategies specifically for just a good, you know, approach to getting a healthy, balanced homeostatic body? Yeah. Great, great stuff. And actually I'm going to touch on something before I even go there, but sure. it's going to relate to your question. I think this is probably going to be one of the most important things I even say in this podcast, because it's actually coming up with something that you just mentioned earlier um, about people not wanting to take our help when we, when we give it to them. So, and you said, it's so much simpler. Don't you think Joel, than we make it out to be, here's something simple that everyone can walk away with today. And I'm going to tell you a quick story, but at the base root of all of this health and disease and all this talk is emotions. It's the mental game. It's the emotion. It's the, it's the emotions behind it. It's the fear. It's the anger. It's the resentment. If you can get those in check, emotional health, man, you will get healthy. And I'm going to give you a quick example. So I have a neighbor who is amazing. And the other day I go over to visit her and she is writhing in pain. And she's like keeled over. She's, she was on her way to the hospital. I had no idea. I saw the garage open. I was going to go ask him if I could use the printer, but because my printer was down and uh, <laughs> little did I know she was going to be keeled over in her car, just in writhing pain. And yep. she said, oh my God, Joel. I, I said like, oh my God, what happened to you? She's like, I, I have diverticulitis. You know, they said mm -hmm. that I have, this is what I have, um, but it's like a flare up or something. I have no idea what's going on. I got to go to the hospital. So my sister's coming over to watch the kids. Okay, wow. So let, let me let's let's stay in touch. Let me see what I can do to help you. I mean, anything, Jesus. And so I follow up with her the next day and I'm like, hey, what'd they say? They don't know. She goes, they don't know. So she had got a diagnosis from a doctor like a week ago or something that she had diverticulitis. That's how she understood the idea of like, oh, my stomach hurts. This is diverticulitis. So she said, they don't know. They have no idea. And actually, the new doctor 
He doesn't even think it's diverticulitis. He thinks it's something else. So mm -hmm. we don't know. So they gave me steroids to just kind of yeah. quell the inflammation. Right. So she goes, I feel a little bit better, but I'm not great. So I, um, I just started embarking into essential oils and, and, and I've always used them, but I really just started using doTERRA and really getting to some of their protocols and, um, really just enjoying the efficacy of, of what they, their brand and what they stand for. So I brought her over some Kapiba and some other stuff. And I said, Hey, listen, I have no idea what's going on, but I want to just let you know that what we see in a lot of clients is that people that get diagnosed with diverticulitis, which is a pretty, man, the diverticuli in your gut, speaking of the gut, right? The gut being the root cause of all illness. They actually have usually a lot of emotional issues. And when we can help them through whatever, there's so many emotion code, body code, there's lots of different practices, therapy. I mean, there's so much, right? When we can help them move through some of these emotions, guess what? They get so much better and they get better faster. They go through protocols a lot better, whether it's weight loss or autoimmune. So I just told her that. And she goes, you know, my sister is an emotion, uh, sister-in-law, I think is an emotion code practice. She just worked on me recently and stuff. I said, okay, well, I just letting you know, hey, maybe dive deeper into that. All right, fast forward. I just go and visit her just the other day. Two weeks have passed. I hadn't talked to her. I go, hey, how are you feeling? Like, how's everything? She looked amazing. She was vibrant. She was just full of energy. She's like, Joel, I'm working out again. I Sometimes I get, I get up at like midnight and I go up for a stroll. I'm like, what are you doing? That's too late. Like, she just had her fourth kid. Like, you need a rest. She's like, no, but I just feel good. It doesn't, it doesn't burn me out. I'm actually feeling really good. And I'm drinking more water. I go, wow, what did you do? What did the doctors do? Nothing. They haven't done anything. She goes, you know what, though? I went down the rabbit hole about the emotions and I really started to explore that. And I realized I had a lot more to unpack. And I thought, that's not that fascinating. Isn't that fascinating? Again, what you just said, we make things out to be so much more. You got to take this pill, this supplement, this protocol. What if you just dial in the mindset, dial in yes. the emotions, right? I mean, anybody that looking at this would say, you can't cure diverticulitis. This woman has no pain. She, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the body is in perfect health. Diverticulitis free. She, I'm like, she doesn't feel anything. She goes, all I did was drink more water and unpack my emotions. That's it. And then so, she can stay on that trail. That's, that's a good take home tip that I usually ask towards the end of the interview. So I appreciate that being right at the start. Yeah. <laughs> so to the, the long winded answer, I would say dial in your mindset, dial in your emotions. I mean, we have so many limiting beliefs and from the chance that we're from zero to seven, we are, I, I teach my clients this, but we are programmed essentially and I have a lot of limiting beliefs. Every day I have these limiting beliefs. You're not good enough. You don't deserve to charge this much. You'll never be, the, you'll never be as great as you think you are. People don't respect you. I have all these ideas. G guess what? It's just old noise that was programmed to me when I was a young kid. And I do a lot of work on the subconscious to reprogram that because I know how important it is, um, these, these, these doubts, these self-doubts, right? And so that's number one. Um, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's where I go with, everybody. And then of course we can talk about a little bit, the nutrition and how exercise that's all important too, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, go ahead, go uh, where you think uh, you like to go on this topic. Sure. I think a big thing that is overlooked and is what I do with pretty much all of my clients is I do a functional medicine detox. And what I try to tell people is listen, I know you've heard it. And I, and by the way, I have coached clients that they school me on some of this new stuff. They're like, hey, well, like, what about Dr. Kelly's detox tea? I was doing that. And I'm like, oh, let me check it out. And by the way, I don't know who Dr. Kelly is. I, I think she's probably wonderful. Again, if you get this person's coming from love and wants to get results and help people. And I think she is. But I looked at some of the stuff. Some of it's gimmicky. Some of it's uh, I some of it's actually expensive. I'm like, I, I don't know if I would do all that. And you know, I mean, I just tell people, look, listen, this isn't, they get the word detox and juice cleanse. They make it like one big word. And I'm like, it's not a juice cleanse is great. Do it for the micronutrients, do it for, you know, the fact that you want to just, you know, in a sense, take on like some fasting because your body's not having to work to digest food, but that is not a detox. You are not detoxing anything. And if you go to the EPA's website, the Environmental Protection Agency, it's our national agency that's supposed to be protecting us. Some big news, guys, in the news, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a huge thing going on with this little uh, chemical known as glyphosate, Roundup, that is sprayed as pesticide sprayed on our crops. Dr. Stephanie Seneff does a wonderful job. She has a great new book called The Toxic yeah. Legacy. I got a chance to interview her. You can go check that out. I mean, she is 
she isn't, <laughs> she's an MIT senior researcher. She knows her stuff. This isn't some, you know, lady that's just pulling, you know, data uh, from anywhere. She's, she's an expert in glyphosate and she will give you a lesson guys. But anyways, the EPA, the Supreme court actually said, EPA, you need to go back and you need to, what you're, what you're telling us right now that it's just safe and effective, like many other things we're hearing in our society, right? Right now it's safe and effective. You need to go back. And we're, we as, we're not satisfied with this answer, this response, because we're seeing a lot of data that's suggesting what you're saying is not true. So they basically slapped uh, the EPA and said, why don't you go back and give us some better guidelines about glyphosate? So I'm only telling you that because, you know, again, I think we, we expect these agencies to do their due diligence and protect us. That's what we expect. That's why we, we pay our taxes and all this stuff. But sometimes they don't always do the best job and things fall to the cracks. But if you go to the EPA's website, they're not lying about this. They tell you flat out, you have been being bombarded by 86,000 man-made chemicals every year. Now, right. just a couple of years ago, that number was 77,000. So <laughs> it's going up. Going up. Um, and so what I tell people is, listen, you are packing all these things in your body, processed food, stress, um, all the things we pack in there, relationship stress, mortgage stress, paying the bills, all these things, along with lack of sleep, processed foods, lack of nutrition, malnourishment, right? Well, your bodies are very resilient, but over time, when we keep putting these toxins in our body, it just starts to overflow. And so we need to be constantly emptying that rain barrel and giving it a chance to, again, by emptying that rain barrel, we're restoring the body's input so that it can naturally heal on its own. And it can't do that when it's being, the, it's being clogged up, right? And so I really believe that, and, and I see it with my clients, it's just transformational doing this functional medicine detox to decongest the liver has so many positive effects when it comes to not only, again, Yes, weight loss is the byproduct, that body adipose tissue. Yeah, I wipe that off. That's great. But guess what else happens? We rebalance your hormones, rebalance blood sugar levels, rebalance cortisol, the stress hormone. You right. start sleeping better. So all these things, I think everybody should do that. And I do detoxes at quarterly just to maintain that because I know I'm being bombarded by these things and I just want to keep my body healthy. So yeah, that's huge. You know, there, there's a lot there that you kind of hit on and, and, you know, I don't think people really realize how amazing the human body is until you really start talking about what it's exposed to when you think of the different chemicals and that's just all the EPA is reporting, you know, yeah. um, at one of the things that in a conversation with, I had a, a, an opportunity to interview uh, Dr. Seneff as well. And, and she, in her book, uh, you know, talks about basically, you know, the exposure that we get from ethanol, you know, so ethanol in our fuel. So they, you know, they have glyphosate sprayed on the corn. It becomes ethanol in our fuel. And even if you're doing really well and organic and all that, you're still breathing in the environment, this one toxic glyphosate. And was it uh, just recently, I think they showed 80% of uh, people's urine samples were you know, found, found glyphosate, right? Yeah. Um, so it is a terrible chemical, but that's one of 86,000. Yeah. And, you know, and then you got all the, you know, all of the, yeah, different and, and the different sources of that, the volatile uh, organic compounds and oh, yeah. EMFs and all the different things. So it all comes down to, it's crazy how amazing the human body is to be able to handle that kind of an onslaught on an everyday basis and still be able to have the opportunity to thrive uh but and and that's the the flip side of that is is one of the things that catches people off guard is that you know hey i've i've done this for years or i've done that for years right and i've been fine yeah. or i i took this medicine or i took this shot and i was fine and it's like oh gosh i wish that you know again that was a simple thing that you did yeah but you entered into the complexity of how the human body is and we got to quit putting stuff toxic into our bodies to begin with and then try to detox what we've done. So you, you hit a lot there and just wanted to kind of ramble on about that a little bit. Yeah, no, you're right. It's a compounding effect, right? And sometimes we were talking offline. Sometimes you can't, you can't extrapolate. Like it's not always obvious, like, Oh, that one shot. That's what, that's what did it, did it in. It's for some people it can be, yeah, their immune yeah. system, their genetics, everything. It's just, that's what happened. That was their body's reaction to it. But uh, it's not always that way. And we, we know Dr. Steph, Steph, Stephanie Seneff's amazing work. There's a great cor uh, correlation with the introduction of glyphosate and autism. And right. I love what Dr. Seneff said, and I, and I challenged her on this, not because I 
don't believe the data. But I said, you know what, Dr. Senna, people are going to say, you can't say that with causation and correlation. This is a senior MIT researcher. I think she knows how to extrapolate data. She goes, exactly, Joel. She goes, but that's how it starts. That's how good research starts. You start to correlate these things or make some idea of the data, and that's what leads to the conversation. She goes, all the conspiracy theorists will tell you, oh, you can't say that. She goes, they want you to say that. So right. anyways, I think hearing that from a senior MIT researcher is really nice because, again, everyone was like, causation, correlation, you can't make that assumption. Well, here is a professional. This is a professional researcher, and she's right. saying, yes, you can. Well, so and you, cool. you know, I think if, you know, if the conversation, if one is being honest, you have to, you have to at least allow that into the conversation. If you know something's yeah. toxic and we'll just go to cigarette smoking, you know, uh, basically, you know, that it's a carcinogen, um, at least let people make the choice with knowledge rather than right. to suggest that there's no connection. You know, you know, if you haven't completely established causation, okay, that's fine. But still, let's be able to have the conversation because these days it's can't even have the conversation, right? Mm -hmm.